Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to the Feast of All Saints. I love this service. It starts off with a bang. We baptize four children today. What a blessing to see the continuity of faith carried on through the decisions that Will and Bailey and Jeremy and Erica and Casey and Evan make today to name and to honor and give thanks to God for the ensoulment of Bishop and Marigold and Ella and Claire. It is my prayer that in a hundred years from now, these four children will have lived into the faith bestowed upon them by their parents and by their godparents and by their grandparents and by this congregation choosing by action to live their lives in harmony with the saints that have gone before them. Because the world will need them to be saints, just as the world needs us to be saints, to follow those who have gone ahead of us. Because the world's a little bit of a mess right now. Turn on the TV, swipe your phone, be old school and turn on the radio. I don't need to tell you, do I? A thought often occurs to me as I'm being bombarded by the daily news. And the thought is this. Is this person or business or government or leader or church that's being represented and is espousing something this day Are they going to land on the right side of history? Is what they're saying or doing today going to prove prescient or moronic? Governor George Wallace is my poster child for this thought exercise. In my mind's eye, I see him standing in the doorway of Foster Auditorium at the University of Alabama, proclaiming, and I'll quote, in the name of the greatest people that have ever trod this earth, I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny, and I say, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Wrong side of history. Do you agree? And amen? Amen. All right. See, I think it's good for our spiritual health every once in a while to ask that question. Is this stance that I am taking going to land on the right side of history? Is this person I am supporting politically going to land on the right side of history? Is this diet I am proclaiming or economic theory I am espousing, or workout routine I am evangelizing, or theology I am prognosticating, or church I am worshiping at, going to land on the right side of history? Am I placing the big rocks of my life on the right side of history? We have role models for this. They have a title. It's called Saint. I don't think there is a person upon which the title of saint is bestowed who hasn't landed on the right side of history. In fact, most of them have earned their saintly wings by standing up against a person or a power or a principality that is at odds with the kingdom of God. The right side of history will land you on God's side of history every time. Now, if you're not sure, if you're not sure if you are heading toward the right side of history, let me suggest one filter. There are many, but let me suggest one this morning. Ask the simple question, who wins if I do this? Or who loses if I do this? And if the answer is that there are, there are going to be winners over here and 
losers over here, then you are pursuing a course of action that is leading you toward the wrong side of history. Because as we know, and we say it often here at Epiphany, there are no winners and losers in the kingdom of God. There are no insiders or outsiders in the kingdom of God. Everyone's wearing the same robe, the soul robe, the white robe, right? That we hear about in the book of Revelation today. If you're wondering where I got that, Scott, book of Revelation. <laughs> now, if you're thinking to yourself, preach, really? Winners or losers? What about sports? Doesn't God love sports? Or at least in the Lord into board games? Chess, Go, checkers, Mahjong, Chinese checkers, video games. Does the Lord love video games? Mm Mm-hmm, I don't know. Some say yes, some say no. I'm not sure where I land on that. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Really, it depends. It depends. If your identity is completely tied up in whether you win or you lose, then the Lord is actually against these things. But if you're in it, you're playing it, you're in the sport or the game to build relationship and for personal satisfaction, maybe self-development. Well, then the Lord is for these things. See, at their best, sports or board games aren't about winning or losing, are they? They, They're about relationship. They're about self-actualization. They're about community. They're about fun. You can even have fun when you lose. I should know. I'm an expert. (laughs) And so you're wondering, how about politics? Right? What about a democracy? Does that mean our democratic system is on the wrong side of history? Well, not necessarily. Right? Having different political philosophies is good. If we let it be good, because it allows for conversations and self-reflection and consideration and dialogue and debate And maybe if we're open, it even allows us at some point to change our mind. The democratic system can certainly measure up to the standard of the saints as long as it earnestly is seeking to care for all people under its jurisdiction. And we see the good uh, democracy, we see the good of democracy play out all over the world, particularly when the process of voting itself is set as a priority for the common good. When the primary concern is participation of all the people, where everybody who votes is treated equally in the outcome. And so democracy at its best is about the radical equality of all people. And it is a vision that has precedent in the Bible. We hear it today. We meet it on the island of Patmos, where John the Apostle is perched, writing or seeing one of the greatest visions we find in literature anywhere the book of Revelation. What John sees as he's sitting there is a great multitude that no one can count. They're from every nation, they're from every tribe, they're from every people, every language, standing there, white-robed, white-robed, peace palm in hand. Who are these people? They are the ones who have come out of the great ordeal. They are the ones who have scrubbed their robes against the big rocks found in the kingdom of God. They are the ones washing with the soap suds of the saints who have gone before them. And if you don't know where to find these big rocks, if you're not sure If you're leaning against one of these big rocks in your life, pushing up against a boulder, and you don't know whether if you should try to push it or not, and if you do, which direction you should go, then ask yourself, what would Dietrich Bonhoeffer do? What would Desmond Tutu do? 
What would Teresa of Avila do? What would Dorothy Day do? Pick your saint. How would they roll the rock that you are leaning against? Or ask someone closer to home. 1963, one such saint was leaning up against a rock in Seward Park when she sought to buy a piece of property. No big deal. She had the money to do it. And yet, it turns out there were bright red lines that kept her from buying that house because of the color of her skin. Lines drawn by people committed to being on the wrong side of history. Clearly, these excluders weren't familiar with the book of Revelation, chapter 7. Because had they been, they would have known that in God's divine economy, everyone has purchasing power. Instead, these excluders chose to tell lies and believe lies about real estate value and educational quality and criminal criminal statistics. Lies that ensure that they would land on the wrong side of history. And they have. And their poor grandchildren have had to apologize for them. Is that what you want for your grandchildren? To have to apologize for you because you chose to land on the wrong side of history. I don't think anyone wants that. So what does it take to be a saint? Well, it requires first and foremost that we see everybody wearing that white robe, that soul robe, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done. It also may include throwing out the winner-loser paradigm prioritizing instead a vision of unity as laid out in the book of Revelation. We seek to be on the right side of history, not so we can be honored, but so when we meet the Lord, when we meet God, we hear God say, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. That said... Every once in a while, someone who's blessed to see the world changed because of the courage they had to set their shoulder against the rock of injustice and roll it toward the right side of history. We have such a person in our midst today who happened to have celebrated her 100th birthday this week. Her name is Mary Henry. Mm -hmm. She had courage, courage to pursue the right side of history. If you don't know what side you want to land on, ask Mary, she'll tell you. (laughs) Right? To push up against the powers and principalities of human evil that sought to thwart her from simply buying a house. And while... There continues to be skirmishes fought around fair housing practices. The rock of redlining has been dislodged and is rolling slowly toward the right side of history. Thank you, Mary Henry. So my prayer for these children today is that they will be sitting in church in 100 years, 100 years from now, as white-robed saints honored because they put their shoulder against a rock of injustice, pushing it as Mary has pushed it toward the right side of history. And we're promising to do the same thing. That's what happens today when we renew our baptismal covenant. We make a promise to dislodge injustice and work toward the kingdom of God, to stand up against Satan and the spiritual forces of wickedness, to stand up against the evil powers of this world that corrupt and destroy the children of God, to root out sinful desires that turn us away from the love of God. That's our calling, friends. 
as we're called to do. How about an amen? amen. Choir, really. Amen. amen. That's my prayer for these children, and it is my prayer for all of you that you may be a saint as well. A saint a little bit like our dear friend Mary. We have a little saintly birthday gift for her. That I would...